Today we're going to be talking about some early spring fishing opportunities that you could be capitalizing on right now. It seems like we're a good month or so away from people really flocking to the lakes and droves and uh, that's when fishing really starts to pick up at least in my neck of the woods in the month of May once the walleye season opens, bass, northern pike and in this video we're going to be sitting down with Brian Brosdahl who's a hardcore multi-species angler, who is also a hardcore ice fisherman. But I can promise you, as soon as the ice leaves the lake, he is launching his boat and he is capitalizing on these opportunities. And we're gonna to talk to Brian about a number of different opportunities that you could be chasing down, and we're gonna start off with perch. You know, right after the ice goes out, the perch really school up heavy, and they do late ice. And that's why perch fish is so good, late ice. They school up and they get ready for the spring spawn. Perch actually, as soon as the ice goes out, they, they start looking for spawning areas and uh, in places to stick their eggs. So weed beds, old uh, rush beds, uh, bigger perch, deeper water. So cabbage stubble, that kind of stuff. They're gonna hold it and you'll know they've been through. If the water's clear, drop your aqua view and look for uh, little skeins of uh, of eggs and it's just like a little hollow netting that they drape across if you see that the females are gone they lay their eggs and they get out of there the males linger and there's your forage fish uh, if, the, if the belly's flat they're male that's how you tell the difference and the females are bellies are big and distended uh, but there's no meat on them so if you're going to target perch to eat grab eat the males there's there there's a bunch of them and they linger now let's take a look at some ice out crappie opportunities. You know, uh, there's a misnomer that crappies really come in to spawn right after ice out. No, they don't. They come in to feed. The ice goes out, the water warms up, the crappie seek out warm areas. So there's that feed bag time that they come on. Some of the biggest crappies that catch of the year are right after ice out. And it's all timing. You have to be there at the right time, right place. But water temperatures will be in the 40s. And I always do better when it's closer to 50. So earlier on, they might be back. They might retreat back to where they were late winter, early winter, uh, somewhere between those areas. And it's not always a deep hole. It could be a flat that's a little bit deeper. So check out these areas and remember, it's all about temperature. Find the warmest area of the lake and you'll probably find crappies, but big crappies are spooky. So you wanna have some depth, at least four, five, six feet of water from to kind of disappear into the shadows, uh, some kind of structure, weeds, or uh, you know, beaver chew from a beaver dam. There's a lot of areas you need to look. Any place with an edge, and sticks are great. Weeds are dead. Sticks uh, aren't giving off any toxins, and they're on them like a magnet. That's why crappie cribs work, though our lakes don't have crappie cribs in them. Uh, beaver dam beavers do make stuff. They, the food that they eat are the, the, the tips of the branches. So there's a lot of plume, a lot of cover, and crappies will be right on the edge of those areas. So I always look for beaver dams uh, where trees have fallen in, and then everything has to be right. I mean, you have to be in an area that has warm temperature and these things. So, you know, look around the lake, check temps, and then look for structure. Okay, so that's the early, early season. What happens a little bit later in spring when the crappies start to set up to spawn? When a lake is in the low 60s, that's when the crappies are coming in to spawn. Not if it's just 62 in one area. I mean, when unilaterally the water's there, they will be in their areas, hard bottom areas. So right after ice goes out there in kind of soft bottom areas, mucky areas, mud, and then as water gets in the 60s, they look for hard bottom areas on the edge of weeds. Good cover for them to have a nest. And uh, then after that, they're gonna find some deep weed line and and eat the bug hatches that come in off the main lake they'll sit on the front of that weed line and just pick up all these bugs as the wind and the and the waves kind of bring them to them so uh, that's crappies in a nutshell from ice out to early summer now wrap it up with the panfish size species let's take a look at early season sunfish you know bluegills love temperature i mean they're 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 more of a warm water fish than crappies or even perch bluegills like warm water um, and so the warmer the water the better and wherever there's crappies in a channel or in a, a deeper part of a canal the bluegills are going to be on the edge crappies sometimes will be up on the edge in that real shallow water but most of the time 
um, they're gonna be a little bit deeper and the bluegills will be right there where it's warm. Remember, bluegills love insect life, so anywhere that there's mud, anywhere there's vegetation, and they gotta hide because bass are always chasing bluegills. Bluegills are the forage fish for a lot of things, bass, walleyes, northern pike, so find weeds, warm water, and you're gonna find some gills. And then they don't spawn until the water temperature's in the 70s. So they're the, they're the last to spawn between crappies, perch, and bluegills. So the, the, when the crappies are, are done spawning and out in the main weed beds, the bluegills will be coming in. And that's usually, you know, around the middle of summer uh, or early to middle of summer. Now the last species we're gonna talk about in this video is one of the Midwest favorites the walleye, and Brian is gonna break down their seasonal progressions. You know, after ice out, and the, the rivers start opening up, walleyes, some rivers have walleyes all year round, even under the ice, but the walleyes will go up into these rivers and make their run, their spawning runs. And in some areas, walleyes will actually go downstream uh, into areas, you, know, you get the, the Mississippi rivers, there's some walleyes that actually go downstream and some go up. They have their areas they like to spawn, little cuts in areas they can go in back in sloughs, uh, be some big expansive flats where they could lay their eggs on gravel shorelines and rivers are a little different than lakes. Lakes, uh, you got your shoreline spawners that are on gravel areas and uh, near Cara, which is a, uh, an algae that's like a skeletal fragmented grass and uh, they, they spawn on the edge or in those weeds because it has an antifungal agent and, and a lot of good things for walleye egg health. Um, but then also aeration. You need a little bit of wave action so that the, they don't get silted over because the egg itself is breathing. And you know that's the kind of detail you need for good spawning habitat. And in rivers, there's always good water flow. And that, that right mix of hard bottom with a little bit of muck uh, is kind of the, the concoction that makes walleye eggs thrive. And anytime you get to see an egg stripping operation, watch a mix in the pan, what they put in there. It's real interesting. And uh, so pike actually spawn before the walleyes. Walleyes will spawn after ice out. When the water temperature hits about 50, they're done. And they'll spawn and the males will linger. That's what provides a lot of our action during opener day is a lot of males. And if you get an early year where the ice goes off and we get a warming trend um, and it's advanced, you might catch bigger fish on the opener. And you still catch big ones, but more often than not, the females will be, they'll dump out deep and then rise up days later to feed and the males get picked off. Um, but I'm thinking that this opener, we're gonna see good fishing for bigger fish because it's advanced. We lost our ice weeks early this time and uh, it all depends on the weather that, that comes with it because every cold front that comes through that drops the water temperature is a reset button. All right, now that we've covered down on seasonal movements and where these fish are gonna be located, where you can find them, let's talk a little bit about how you're gonna catch them. Brian is gonna break down some tactics for a number of different species and we're gonna start off with panfish. You know, when, when I go out and I'm gonna target panfish, I like to use a light rod. You usually have one that's seven or eight foot. Uh, this one's real whippy and it's got a soft tip. You want a soft tip because crappies have real thin membrane for mouth and you don't want to tear it. And I'll target perch, crappies, bluegills with kind of a the same maneuver. I'll use uh, a little bobber, a light bite bobber from Northland and a couple split shots so I could add or, or I could take off one. And I'll use bull shot or, or bullet sinker sometimes also, but the swivel keeps it from going down. And then on windy days, like today is really windy, not right here, but everywhere else. Between my jig and my bobber, I'll put one little split shot so you don't get that pendulum thing going on when you're casting and tangle you all up. Uh, I like to use braid because I can zip it out there and retrieve my line in the wind nicely. And so I'll give myself about two and a half feet. And this is a good rig for everything. I like to throw uh, firefly jigs from Northland. Pink and white's a great color. In tannic water, darker water, it's good. Also good in clear. Uh, greens, uh, white is, is good, but I always go with pink and glow and a, and a couple of wax worms. Bring some minnows, different sizes. Uh, sometimes on a light bite, they want a small minnow. and Sometimes the crappies want big minnows. And this is a bait right here that's gonna catch perch, 
crappies and bluegills. Uh, a couple waxies, sometimes three waxies even, on a hook. More meat and uh, going with a, a 16th to a 32nd ounce jig is perfect. 64th when it really, really gets tough and uh, throw it in, let it sit in front of them. If you're just pitching and you keep going, you might be going past the fish. It's got to stop, settle, and sit there, and they got to swim over and accept it and put their nose up to it and decide whether to eat it or not. But I do have some pitching strategies also, which I can show you right here. I'll use a small gypsy jig. There's a Northland gypsy jig. You can see that flash of blue is really bright colored. Throw a minnow on there and pitch and just do a slow jig and let it fall back and slow jig and let it fall back and you don't have to go to the bottom unless you're fishing perch and you're pitching up into a car bed or, uh, or even a cabbage stubble um, but for the most part you're fishing in mud and with a few vegetated areas and if you like to cast this will work but remember to, to, to move it really slow and uh, it's a way of finding the fish you catch one fish that fish gave away the school all right, now Brian is gonna wrap this video up with some tactics that you can use to put some big walleyes in the boat this spring. Walleyes are fun this time of year because it's a lot of jigging. And using a jig with a, a fat head or a shiner minnow or uh, rainbows if you can get them works really well. Um, it's all about your jigging cadence also. So when, if you have a minnow on here and you're pitching out there, you know, on, on a good day, I might hop it real sharp like this and hop but you don't want to sweep it too far because in rivers darker rivers that jigs moving too far it, it gets out of their field of view they don't know where it went you, you pulled it too fast so short sharp hops like this work really well or if you're if you're just drifting downstream then i like to just kind of do the bottom bump and then just lift it up and just do a little snap and just kind of bump the bottom again just so you know where it's at in a snaggy area, you want to bump it real quick and get out of there <laughs> so you don't get snagged. But uh, And then in pitching, sometimes it's just a matter of pitching it out. And we've got four to six feet of water here. And just a light light hop. And just, just kind of touch the bottom. Don't drag it across the bottom. Just kind of touch it, just little short hops. But when you get a fish, you want your rod low enough that you have room to set the hook. Just like that. So that's how I'm approaching it. And when you're jigging, you could even go over the side of the boat, spot lock, and work your way, uh, you know, just just get anchor up and just jig and wait for the fish to come to you. Or you can slowly move up the river, uh, set your trolling motor to a contour, and just slowly hop, especially if the current's really slow. You can move really slow and even zigzag because then your, your jigs are going back and forth through the water column where the fish are traveling and covering the area as well as you can, kind of uh, coloring it in uh, with by putting your jig everywhere. Put your jig where the fish are. If you can see the fish on side imaging, then you can fall back to them with your jig. Don't put the boat on top of them. You wanna just put the jig back on top of them. And that's the neat thing with today's technology. You'll just look and you'll see a fish pitch past them and then just hop it through and plastics work really well uh, smelt minnow works really well uh, uh, rip and jig works well plastic and it darts um, but just kind of let it fall in and bring it past them if you got a big lively minnow let your minnow do the work you just want to bring it past and I'm just kind of pulling slowly and when the fish hits, don't just pop it real quick because you're going to break your minnow in half and give the fish half your bait. Just slowly reel. You're setting a hook with your fishing reel and then sweep the rod tip. Well, that's just about everything you could possibly want to know to chase down some early, early spring ice out fishing opportunities, whether you're chasing perch, sunfish, crappies, walleyes, pike, you name it. There's a lot of cool opportunities right now that you could be taking advantage of. So if you learned something in this video, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below and stay tuned because we have more awesome videos to come this spring. See you in the next one.